Hey, what's up everyone? My name is AJ Writes Crypto and welcome to the channel. As excited as I am to get into the normal crypto content, you know, the coin reviews, the price predictions, the portfolio builds, all that, I wanna use this first video as an opportunity for you all to learn more about who I am, my story, and what got me to where I am today. Listen, I wanna make something perfectly clear. I don't just wanna be another person talking about crypto. I wanna do this channel my own way. And as someone who watches more content than most, I wanna watch something real. And that's the content I'm gonna make for you. So do me a favor, smash that like button, and let's get into this. First off, I'd like to thank each and every one of you that has helped get me to this point. It would be impossible without you guys. All right, I want you guys to know where my journey started, how I got into crypto, how I landed my dream job, why I left that job, and what I'm doing now. And if I'm gonna tell my story, we're gonna start at the beginning. I was born right outside of Philadelphia, Pennsylvania in the summer of 1991. Look at that little monster. Growing up as a kid, to be honest, I was never much of a team player. I tried to play baseball and basketball and all that, but it was never my thing. Early on, I was attracted to individual sports like skateboarding, MMA, and motocross. As a teenager, you could find me going to punk rock shows or hopping fences, getting kicked out of street skating spots in Philly. And if only I had a dollar for every time I argued with a security guard about just getting one more try. Sure, music and skateboarding were my hobbies, but motocross was my passion. Believe it or not, I actually started out drag racing. But once I went to the motocross track for the first time, I was forever contaminated. In a good way, I think. When I say I grew up racing motocross, I don't mean I would just race here and there. I raced just about every weekend, traveling all around the country with my dad from the time I was seven all the way until my early 20s. I was sponsored and I won more races than I can even remember. Not to talk myself up, but I was wicked fast. I was smart enough to win and dumb enough to send it. I grew up racing the likes of Eli Tomac, Justin Barsha, and Cooper Webb, who are the top pros in the sport right now. The thing with me racing is that my parents were really strict. And if I didn't get really good grades, I could not go racing. So out of necessity, I always took my education very seriously. And I'm glad I did because in retrospect, that's what saved me. And that's where I found my passion for writing. But before I get into that, I want you to remember, I grew up in an era where my heroes were Travis Pastrana, Bam Margera, and Johnny Knoxville. At this point in time, your success was measured by how fast you could go and how far you could jump. And it was a dangerous game. And unfortunately for me, motocross is unarguably the gnarliest sport that there is. And breaking 27 bones is what stopped me from pursuing a professional career. But hey, at least I have a side gig writing for Racer X. And if you don't know, Racer X is the largest motocross magazine in the whole industry. So sure, I didn't get to go pro, but at least I get to contribute to my favorite sport in my own way. Silver lining for sure. Moving forward into my college years, I was at the tail end of my career in racing but this is when I really fell in love with music. For some background, every year, for well over a decade, I went to a punk rock summer camp called the Vans Warped Tour. If you never had a chance to go to Warped Tour, I'm sorry because it's over now. After a few summers at Warped, me and a few of my closest friends were inspired to start a band called A Journey Back Home. This is without a doubt the most fun I've ever had in my entire life. I mean, these were the golden years. I focused all of my energy into this band. And just two months after our first practice, we played a sold out show at the Harmony Grange with Icy Stars. You might not know who they are or what that place is, but trust me, it was a really big deal and I still can't believe it happened. Our second album was even produced by a kid named Ari Leff, who went on to start a solo project called Love. He went on tour with like Ed Sheeran and he did songs with BTS and he's probably one of the most popular names in pop music today. And he made it there because he was focused on his craft. Alternatively, once we got a taste of the tour bus party life, we were focused on partying way too hard. And I took it too far and I'm not proud of it, but it is part of my story. So shortly after our drummer had a kid and the band broke up, I moved to New Haven, Connecticut to get my act together. And this is where crypto entered the chat. Living in New Haven, Connecticut was a breath of fresh air for me. I distanced myself from the problematic people, places, and things in my life, and I started to rebuild from zero. I worked at a coffee shop on the Yale campus, and I even took a month-long creative writing workshop at Yale just as an excuse to get out of the house. At the time, I had no idea how far the things I learned in that class would take me. 
Anyways, probably around 2015, 2016, I had a friend named Eric who could just not stop talking about Bitcoin. He was on my case 24 seven about buying in. And I did buy some here and there, but it was just to fund my online poker tournaments. But that was the point when I knew that there was something special about crypto. Also, I saw this movie in theaters called Dope, and seeing the end of that movie certainly sparked my curiosity about the industry. This was the introduction to crypto that I needed, and that was the beginning of the rest of my life. So we need to fast forward a little bit here. Maybe I'll write a book about it one day, I don't know, wink wink. So after I went on tour with a new band, I left Connecticut, I moved to LA, then I moved to Long Beach, then I moved back to Maryland, and then I ended up moving to Orcas Island in Washington State. See, I never got to spend that much time with my mom and my two little sisters, and I wanted to be in their lives while they were still in school. And I'm glad I took that time to spend with Tori and Erica while they were still in their formative years. Now we're closer than ever. And just a side note, Orcas Island is literally straight out of a movie. It is my favorite place in the world, and if you ever get a chance to go on vacation there, make it happen. And my favorite part about living there is that one of the biggest skate parks on the west coast was just right across the street from my mom's house. Yes! 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 <laughs> <Woo>! <laughs> it took me so long to land that. So anyways, I spent my time on Orcas working at a few restaurants, I worked as an electrician, and if I wasn't golfing or skating, I was doing some odd job around town. I was having a great time, I had a lot of friends, and I loved living there, but I just couldn't keep going paycheck to paycheck forever. I knew that I had to make a change. And luckily, for me, this is when I met a wonderful girl named Jada, and she's been my ride or die for the past five years. And if you're wondering how we met, she kicked my ass at beer pong, and I had to be with her. I just had to. So after one more year on Orcas, Jada and I decided to move back to Maryland. And three weeks after the move, this happened. Whoa! You can't see it well from that angle, but I got cross jumped, like the other rider cut in front of me mid air on a 65 foot jump, and I had nowhere to go. I broke my left humerus bone and had to get a gnarly surgery to straighten it out. All the injuries I had before did not prepare me for this one. The recovery process took forever, and this was certainly a low point in my life. And to add insult to injury, by the time my finger started working again, COVID happened. So I had this two year chunk of time where I couldn't work, the world was going crazy, and I had nothing but time. So I decided to use it. This is when I stopped messing around, and I made a promise to myself that I could make a living if I went all in on crypto. My family actually laughed at me when I told them. They said, AJ, you have to have money to invest in crypto. And they were right. I did okay in the years before, but all the money I made on crypto, I spent it all. So in December of 2020, I didn't have much. I had a room at my dad's house, a bunch of friends, a great relationship with Jada, a motocross track in my backyard, and about $3,000 to my name. That was it. And really, this is where the grind began. I would plan out every minute of every day when I was gonna study, when I was gonna look at charts. If I didn't know what something meant, I looked it up. I was on a mission and no one could stop me. And this is when I started listening to Altcoin Daily, BitBoy Crypto, Ivan on Tech, Wendy O, and the list goes on and on. I took learning about crypto more seriously than any college class or any motocross race. I was determined to change my life for the better. I studied crypto like my life depended on it, because it did. By March of 2021, that $3,000 turned into 30,000. And that's when I knew I was onto something. So one day I was listening to the BitBoy Crypto live stream and Ben said something like, we're looking for someone to help us with technical analysis, make a video, send it in, and if we like you, we'll reach out. My girlfriend Jada actually overheard him say that and basically told me that if I didn't make that video and send it to them, that I was gonna sleep outside with the dog. To be honest, I never actually thought that they would pick me. I made the video reluctantly just to appease Jada. And it's crazy because when I did it, I didn't pretend or put on a front or act like someone I wasn't. I made the video with the attitude that if they're gonna hire AJ, they're gonna get AJ. I made the video in one take and I thought to myself, it's a long shot, it probably won't happen, but at least I don't have to sleep outside with Indy. So about a month went by, I didn't hear anything back from them and I figured that they'd pick someone else. So on a more serious note, one day, I went to the graveyard to visit Cody, one of my best friends from high school who passed away a few years before. If I was ever struggling or needed to let it all out, I would go talk to Cody because I knew if he was still here, he would understand. On this specific day, 
I put my hand on his grave and I begged him, dude, please help me, give me strength, give me guidance and help me find my way in this world. Later that very same day, I went to a gas station and my phone buzzed. I looked at it and I had an email from Nick DiMondi, the head of content at Hit Network, and he wanted to talk to me about a job opportunity.